Stephen Shaw making his way to the ring from one half of the rap group Mob Deep. That's Havoc walking out Stephen Shaw for his first career scheduled 10 rounder and main event on ESPN and Sky Sports. The Silent Roller, F.A. Ajagba. Born in Nigeria, now residing in Houston, Texas. Managed by James Prince and trained by Kate Karoma and Emmanuel Savoy. Twenty sixteen Olympic Games representative of Nigeria, ranked at number sixteen in the heavyweight division by the WBC. Only fought one time last year, had some you know medical issues to clean up with his both elbows. Yeah, yeah well elbow pain is pretty common for uh, for boxers, especially big punchers. Takes a lot of a lot of the impact is absorbed yeah. in the elbows. And he has yeah, surgery on both his left and right elbow, the left arm for some pieces of, of bone in there, and then the right more for some muscle damage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside Turning Stone Resort and Casino here in beautiful Verona, New York. This is boxing. This is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arrow. Brought to you this evening by Boost Mobile. Power is money. And by AutoZone. Get in the zone. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. Our judges at ringside, Eric Marlinski, John McKay, and Don Trella. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Charlie Fitch. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, presented in association with Debella Entertainment. He weighed in at 239 and a half pounds, wearing black trunks with gold and red trim. His record, 18 victories, no defeats, one no contest. 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout from St. Louis, Missouri, Stephen Big Shot Introducing out of the red corner, presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions. He weighed in at 235 and a quarter pounds, wearing blue trunks with gold trim. His record, 16 victories, one defeat, 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout 
He is a 2016 Olympian from New Gaelic, Nigeria, the silent roller, F.A. Ajaba! Good evening, Stefan. Good evening, Neffy. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now. Come out fighting at the bell. All right, here we go. It is heavyweight boxing in the main event. Stefan Shaw, F.A. Ajaba, Christina Pontra, Chris Algieri here with you. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds. Here we go. The second fight in just 53 days for Stefan Shaw. Big opportunity for him to step up against F.A. Ajaba, who many feel like was the favorite coming into this fight. But in fact, on the odds, Chris, Stefan Shaw was the favorite. Tell us why. Because of what you just saw just there, the speed differential. He's got much quicker hands than Ajaba. He's landing that jab, almost that will to start. He has a very high boxing IQ. He's undefeated. So there's, there's a lot of upside to Stefan Shaw in this fight. Ajagba with the blue trunks and blue gloves. Shaw with the black trunks with gold trim. Ajagba looking to establish the jab. We know about the power in his right hand. So Shaw. does Stefan Shaw. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's, he can punch as well. Not, they, you know, they, they've got similar amount of fights and the same knockout, the same amount of knockouts in Correct. their career. Stefan Shaw knows his way around a boxing ring. You can see the way he's moving. Everything is by design. Gets his head off line as he jabs. Hand position right back up. Boxing in his blood for Stefan Shaw. His grandfather, Buddy Shaw, was a renowned trainer of amateurs in St. Louis, where they're from. And his father, Brian Shaw, was an accomplished amateur boxer himself. He's been watching old VHSs since he was a kid of all the legends and just knew that this is where he was going to be. Didn't want to do anything else but box. Team Shaw seems to think that F.A. Ajagba, Ajagba cannot fight going backwards. And if that's the case, their game plan is going to work out perfectly because Stefan Shaw is able to back him up at will with that jab right there. Good right hand over the top there from Shaw. F.A. has got some good sparring with Jared Anderson to get him ready for this fight as they both train with Cape Roma in Houston, Texas. Feeling 100% for the first time in quite some time, he told us. From what I understand, sparring with Jared Anderson is, is no fun day in the office. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's quite a young talent, and a lot of people have him as you know one of the, the guys to carry the heavyweight division for the next generation. Aside from... Aside from being super talented, Jared Anderson apparently is very mean in sparring. He, doesn't, he takes it out on his sparring partners. He's, he's one of those guys who's known for that. Good work with the stick from Ajagla and from there from Shotsi looking to counter with that right hand, just misses him. Ajagla back to the jab. Excellent first round for Stephen Shaw. Established himself as the dominant fighter, using his jab, controlling the center of the ring, backing a jackpot up for most of the round. And really disarmed the jackpot from landing anything meaningful in that round at all. Round 
2, the scheduled 10-rounder, our main event from Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona. Quick. Both men are sparring a little with their lead hands. Sean needs to be very careful doing that because of that, that pin move we spoke about from Ajagba in the lab segment. He'll pull that hand cut off, cut off. and throw the right hand over the top. Quick. You can see kind of the hand speed on the return from Shaw as well. Yeah, much quicker. Yes, quick, quick, half. You got a touch. I don't think there's really any the confusion to think that Jagba is a fast-handed fighter. He's not. He's methodical, he's long, and he's strong. Keep cut off, cut off, cut off. There you go. I'm surprised Shaw moving cut to his on, left on, so much, just into the power hand go, of Jagba. His right hand yeah. is the yeah. shot you really want to be careful of. But he keeps Which moving in that direction. Good. Good. Touch, touch. Right there. Let it go. Come on. Don't wait on me. Good. Jogba doing better controlling the center of the ring this round. Let it go. Let it go. Not Quick. allowing Shaw to back him up. Good. Well, he Good. leaned in and just missed with that right hand in Jogba and Shaw coming back. Down to the body with the jab goes Ajaka. That's smart. He's having trouble landing it upstairs. Change the levels on it. Go high, go low. At the end of the day, he's looking to set up that right hand. That's his punch. Even just jabbing to the gloves of Shaw. Mm -hmm. Just to try to get him to bring his hands down. No, I like what Ajaka's doing here. He's changing his levels. He's sticking that jab. It is, it's a hard jab. Hasn't been landing super clean, but... Rhythm, rhythm, stay in your rhythm. Good thing. And Shaw's corner reminding him to your point, move to move to your right, move to the right, away from the right hand of Ajagba. Notice he did it immediately. That shows real good ring awareness. He's able to hear his coaches and, and immediately respond. Ooh, good try with the right hand. Just yeah, missed. set it up off the double jab, but just missed. Quick, quick jab. Come on, man. Switch it up, man. They give Ajagba credit for at least continuing to keep that jab hand active as he gets caught with the counter. Did he get that left hand get through? Yeah, the trailer's not Yeah. From Shaw, man. Well. Yeah, no, there's a better round for Ajagba. Being busy with that left hand is important. into the Shaw corner. His trainer, Bashir Abdullah, who his family has known for quite some time, ever since Shaw was young, is, you know, one of the most respected trainers in, in all of boxing. He's had a ton of athletes to his credit for being a, you know, not only a, a U.S. Army veteran, but head coach of the Army Athletic Program. And, USA World Championship teams, etc. Two-time USA Boxing Coach of the Year. Knows his charge very well. Even though he wasn't the trainer that Shaw started his career with, that was Kevin Cunningham. Yeah, we, we, uh, we heard that story in the fighter meeting yesterday. How they split, and he's found a new home. Seems to be working out well. There goes to San Diego and trains with Bashir. Uh, you know, from St. Louis, Missouri, whenever he has the opportunity and Rashir very confident this week in what his uh, he has prepared with his people to take on FAA Jogba. I feel like they have the more well-rounded fighter. And Shaw coming off that win against Rydell Booker in New York only a few months back he said he went right back to camp so you know he's in shape tonight. Right. Oh good right hand from Shaw. Yeah that was November 22nd so this is really I mean just 53 days later he's taking his second fight in a row. It's basically a double camp. And I saw that Rydell Booker fight. Rydell Booker doesn't get really get stopped by anyone. He's a very seasoned guy. He's been around for a long time. Clean break, thank you. But it's rounds. Quick hand speed, speed once again on display from Shaw as he pops out that left hand jab. Mix it up, remember? 
Up, up, down, up, down. Wanting him to change levels on his jab. Something I know you're a big fan of. Big fan of that, changing levels with your head and your hands. It's just, it sets up so many so many different things. And actually, Ajayi's been doing a good job of that tonight, setting up that right hand. He's jabbing high, jabbing low. See Shaw, see he gets up on that back toe. A step up on that back toe and he's getting ready to go forward and throw like that. Mm -hmm. Nice, good change of levels. Yeah, coming Looked down like with that right hand. And put yep. the right hand low on the hip. That was crafty. Oh, Shaw, Shaw knows his way around a boxing ring. There's no question about that. But can he keep it up? Can he avoid that right hand? Can he build off of these jabs and land combinations? That's that's what I'm looking for next. <laughs> Having a lot of success when he doubles the jab. <laughs> nice. Nice jab to the body there by Jogby. A jock box. Good jab up top, too. Good shot right on the hip, if you will, with the right hand from Shaw. And down to the gut once again goes a Jogby with that lead jab hand. Mm. He's done plenty of work with that jab hand, has a Jogby. Throwing different kinds of jabs, yes, too, mixing exactly. them up really well. I like that right hand to the body. That's a, that's a great setup for the right hand upstairs. Get the guy thinking, who I, do I need to protect with my elbow or do I need to protect with my glove? Keep him guessing. This is good. Yeah, come on, huh? don't gotta be low. That's a hand, though. Come on, turn this shit up and walk him back. Come on. Yeah. Left hook. Good work. Let's just keep adding to it. We're taking a look at some of the CompuBox numbers for the first three rounds. Uh, Ajago landing 16 body shots compared to four. Four seven shots. There you go. Okay, catch him while he's on his heel. That's off the strength of those jabs. Yeah, yeah, that's the just being set up to those jabs to the body. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not, that's not like hooks or big right hands. No, he's not, he's not a body. big body puncher. Exactly. in general, but he does stick that jab down low. Yeah, yeah, that's not like hooks or big right hands. No, he's not, he's not a big body puncher in general, but he does stick that jab down low pretty well. Look at the, look at the reach on. A jog, man. <laughs> I mean, the second longest reach in boxing, same as Tyson Fury, 85 in inch reach. Damian Kaniba has an 86 in inch reach, heavyweight, Polish heavyweight. And you see every bit of that when he fully extends that jab. Yeah. And he's such like a, like a thin torso with those long arms. Really an, an animal. And I guess so does Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Long, thin. Those wiry guys, they hit hard. Should he said in all those years of sparring Deontay Wilder, he had never been knocked down by Deontay. He said he, he had wobbled Deontay a few times, but he said he never, you know, like, never hit the canvas. He's never hit the canvas as a pro either. Oh, he, he does have good defense. Some good confidence. Oh. oh, and there's the yeah, right hand there. that got in a bit from Ajabba. Ajabba, I mean, Shaw, again, moving towards that right hand of Ajabba, really should be kind of going more to the right hand side, not to the left. Yeah, if Ajabba had thrown that punch straight, that might have done some real damage. He threw it a little loopy and hit Shaw more high on the head. Hard to hurt a guy like that. You see the hands of Shaw getting a little lackadaisical now. He's not being quite as tight on the defense upstairs with his hand position. That's going to open things up for Ajagba upstairs. And he keeps moving to that right. I don't, I don't like that.
strong lead left hand there catches Ajabba. Again, he was getting up on that back foot. You see, when he gets that heel off the floor on that back foot, he's getting ready to throw a combination. Oh, oh good nice. counter left hand. Caught that right hand well. A little glance off with his lead hand. Oh, nice right hand there from the jogger. Just, just touches Shaw on the chin. The jogger really not doing anything different in each round. No. You know what I mean? It's a lot of the jabs, a lot of jabs high and low. Occasionally throws the right hand, but has been very consistent in what he's done through the first four rounds so far. Yeah, right, so zero we, adjustment we, so far. Get comfortable though, okay? So, so I'm touching him with more combo. Shaw, I would like to see him be more active, but he is still been effective. Don't give him no break. Let your hands go. Let him get a vision. You gotta let the hands go, huh? Even that jab, you see he's going to his right all the time. Look at this. Go to right hand. There you go. There you go. Everything he's doing is out loud. They was missing, but we got to score off of him. We got to score off of Come on. Wake up, baby. You hear me? Wake up. Come on. I need you, okay? Wake up. Scheduled for 10, and Chris, through the first four rounds, how, did, how do you have it scored? I have a three rounds to run for Stephen Shaw. I think he's been very effective with the lead jab. His defense has been very, very tight. Gave the second round to Ajagba because of... Even though Ajagba's thrown 50 more punches, it's the accuracy for you for Shaw. Yes, absolutely, gotcha. absolutely. He's, he's controlling the fight. Even if he's not in the center of the ring. Or busier. Ooh, big swing and a miss from the guy. <laughs> Shaw is boxing well, but he needs to be careful not to lull himself to sleep. And one of the throw punches in combination. And one of the things that, you know, the first thing that I wrote with Stephen Shaw is him telling us he needs to relax and take his time and box. But to the same time, not to your detriment where you're going to lose rounds because you're not throwing enough punches. Not, not fall into the Adam Lopez effect. He said just be aggressive when need be. And now I'm seeing this play out. And I'm like, mm, maybe a little adjustment needs to be made. Yeah, he, he needs to add to those jabs. He's landing those jabs beautifully since round number one but has not been able to put combinations together. And in previewing the fight, that was one of the main things. He's a combination puncher. Very good combination puncher. He's only thrown one, one hook tonight and landed well. And then just hit himself with the two pieces. Yeah, he, got hit, he hit himself with more punches than Ajagba has landed this round. Mm. Jog was trying different things. No, for the first time. Yeah, trying some different things now. Throwing punches a little differently. Try to, hook, try to hook that right hand around up high. Yeah, at these higher levels, you, you can't just throw a jab and a right hand. You've got to you've got to be able to mix things up, change speeds, give different looks. Oh, good right hand there over the top from Jog. <laughs> There's been several times they've both thrown the right hand at the very same time. Come on, Hap, Matt! Job doing a good job of closing the distance here. 
he's in range, especially with the reach that he has. He just needs to let those hands go a little bit more. And block that shot there from Shaw. And he comes right back with the jab there to Jogba. Like that. He have no defense for it whenever you run your hand. And I like that lead right hand when you're using it like a jab, like your father said. And sometimes you can double it up. Okay? All right. Good. Keep being creative. Why you wake up, man? You gotta let your hands go, son. Huh? He's not doing that. One, two, one. You let him control it because he's following. One, two, three. Oh, oh. Step in. One, two, three. Oh, Come on. Oh, let your hands go. I know you ain't tired. Come on, man. We ain't free. Right. Look. Right hand hook. Let your hands go. When he on the rope, throw your right hand hook, man. Trying to listen in on the corner there. I mean, I obviously didn't get much from the Ajago corner, but. Seems like Brashear wants Stefan Sada to continue to press forward and double up on his jab, put put more of the pressure on, have him move forward some more. I would agree. That's exactly what I want to see as well. I want to see him be more active. I want him to use those combinations that have been so successful for him, for him in other fights. You gotta move it. You gotta move that hand if you're hanging out there. Halfway through the scheduled 10 rounder. And what would you say if you were take Roma in a jobless corner? Let those hands go. You're getting you're getting yourself in range, and you're and you're not you're not being busy enough. Shaw isn't countering like he was earlier. Oh, oh. counter shot right there from Shaw. Big right hand that wobbled a jobless. And he hooked the left hand around the guard of the Jogba. That's one of the things about Jogba. When he does anything aside from what he normally does, he almost freezes some moment. He, he almost asks if I did that right. And then he gets cracked. Oh, careful. Sticking your chin up. Look over, trying to fight out of it. Look over. He's got to hold his arms. Break! First and last, meaning go first and answer back. Good advice from the corner, Stephen Shaw. More of the same for the Jogba there. Down to the body with the lead left hand. Shaw getting the better of that jab. Yeah, he's having a good round. <laughs> having a good round. And I there are all the ropes. I don't like to see him there, though. It's not a good place to be. When you got a, a, a big puncher like a jogger in front of you. Yeah, if I'm a jog this corner, I'm telling him, let that right hand go. Even if he's blocking, punch right through his guard. He tried earlier in the round to kind of hook it around. I don't think uh, he needs that. Guard, he can punch right through it. Yeah. Right through it. Punch his hands, punch his gloves, punch his wrists. The oh. job was getting closer and closer. Mm, nice jab there from that thing. with the jab there. Come on, man. Look, brother, you won this fight. But you kind of, please, can I get a combination? Water. Okay. Your jab, it can't be slow. Remember, I told you that. Boom, boom. He said, wow, he's counting back. Touch your chin, break your back. Boom, boom. Give me a combination. Come on. Two shots. 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 Yeah. Two shots. Right hand. Then look. Stop. Put your back. Get that right hand. Put your combinations together. Hey, put some combinations together. You're doing good, okay? I need you to throw some combinations. We can, we can get this guy. Okay? Beautiful work. 
that's yeah. just that's what's lacking right now. They both shot the jab. They both shown some good defense. They both you know, have changed levels on the jab. You've seen Shaw's hand speed. You've seen him land a couple good punches that last round. They just haven't been able to put combinations together back to back. They need to build. They need to build up what they're doing now. It's already round seven. We only got a couple of rounds left. Break! No punches! Thank you. Nice cool fight. Good sportsmanship. Okay. Watch. showed this graphic much earlier in the broadcast, but if either of these guys want to, you know, be named amongst any of the prospects or the contenders in the heavyweight division, they've got to show them something to have people say, wow, oh, I want to see him again. Yeah, absolutely. This guy's talented. Oh, this guy's got this or that. And um, this is a big opportunity for both of these guys tonight to show the heavyweight division something. Yeah, I don't think either one of them has shown new, new wrinkles or anything that we haven't seen from them before in the past. Jogba landed some good right hands on the ropes here. Another good right hand there. Lands over the top. That's good advice. Get out of counter mode. Be first from the corner of Shaw. I can't help but agree with that. He's got to go forward. He's got to be first. He's got to let his hands go. He's going to outwork this round. There's at least the right hand coming behind the jab there. We saw it earlier from Jabba, double jab, right hand. You know, but Shaw's corner is absolutely correct. He's going to want to win some of these rounds, especially in the second half of the fight. Uh, he can't let Jabba dictate everything off his jab and his right hand. Jabba's having his best round of the fight so far. Because Shaw's not doing anything. Nothing. 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 He's not answering now. He's not landing the jab. He's time to help Big shot, running his big shot, as in by. Oh, just missed the job. Yeah, Shaw's doing a good job just getting his head out of the way enough while still standing the ground with his feet. Mm -hmm. But, but then bring a counter. But he's not answering. Exactly. <laughs> More of that jab to the body from Ajaka. Back up top with the left hand. No Shaw. right no right hand behind it. Though. Shaw has changed his body position, though. He, he looks like he's out of counter mode in terms of his stance. Let's see if he actually lets his hands go. You can almost tell that Jocko was gonna, um, like, rev up for that right hand, right there that he threw right up and Like, he did this whole motion with the speed and then wound up his jab hand and then threw the right hand. It's like a big tell when he yeah. really has to be set. All right, let me see it. Yeah, he's, right, he's definitely got tells. Okay? All right, look like you took off that. Let's get out of, get out of counter mode, okay, and be first. Go back to being first, okay? All right. You got some two, brother. Boom, it's working. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? All you got to do, keep him here. Give me fours and threes. Let your hands go, your face. Thus far, this fight has been a fight of near misses. Both men throwing their respective shots, but not a whole lot of leather being landed. They just seem to be just out of range, just off a little. I mean, I give the Jogba credit for being consistent with shooting the jab to the body I means landed 33 of those shots to just seven body shots total for Shaw. But maybe Shaw should start to try to invest some work downstairs. Shaw. Doesn't really throw body shots unless he's throwing a combination. He'll start upstairs and work his way down. If they're going shot for shot, Shaw isn't going to take the risk of, of bringing his hands down low because of the power of Jack. Move the right hand upstairs from Shaw. See, this is the stuff Shaw could have been doing all night long. Who knows, he may have felt the power of a Jogba and felt that it's not worth the risk. I mean, that's what it looks like at this point. Yeah, he, he, he was looking very comfortable yeah. early on. Now he's not. Come on, 
Jones. Good shot to the body there from Jaga. Right hand down low. Good shot. And he takes a couple of those short little shots from Shaw, but they're not coming with that same hand speed that they were earlier. No, they're not, they're not as jarring. I, I'm, I'm surprised. I don't think Jaga understands how tall, how long his arms are. He's standing right in his range and not throwing. He thinks he needs to get closer. This fight would be rightfully so. Shaw being the favorite, even though he was quote unquote the B side, he's not the the, the, the prospect that Ajaba people thought that Ajaba was. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. He's with PBC and then got let go, right? Correct. And then top rank picks him up. And yeah, Ajaba had some wanting to get less, healthy and less than stellar performances and was cut from PBC. And, and top rank picks him up. They want to stack their heavyweight, give their heavyweight division, having Tyson, having Jared Hobbit. Moving guys down the line, all the way down to Sunny Kanto, and now Richard Torres. And there, there's so much opportunity in this heavyweight division right now. And I, I'm just waiting for one of these guys to try to separate themselves from each other. There's so many opportunities for Shaw to capitalize, and he's just not pulling the trigger. He's getting that work by a job right now. And even the body language, it just yeah. looks, it just looks different. If you're, if you're judging this, you're, you're looking at what F.A. is doing, hunting and moving and looking to be in a bit of a more of a rhythm. Hey, look, we all hunt, we stop. Now, you don't swing too, you know what Breathe. Okay? He tied. All right, you broke him down on that. Jake Kerlmo like, pleading with F.A., grabbing his head, please, F.A., please let your hands go, clear as day, grab his fighter's head and right. set that to him, like fake kick. He's right. right. You can do that to both these guys. They've both been handcuffed by, them, by themselves all night. It's not like one guy's making the other keep his hands where they are. They're, they're, they're choosing not to punch. All right. The penultimate round, round nine. This one's scheduled for 10. Heavyweight boxing, you never know. You know, we had Guido up on all the cards before the fight was stopped by a cut. This one obviously going farther and closer, but things can change in the heavyweight division just on one punch. Scorecards could go out the window, but we're nearing the end. Yeah, I have, it, I have it, a draw right now, 76, 76. Okay. So these, these, last, these last two rounds are going to decide the winner. Which is probably why more desperation from the Ajaka corner. I mean, people kind of asked in the fighter meeting who, who they felt had more to lose. And they asked F.A., do you feel like you have more to lose or he does? And he said, I'm not going to lose. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't even he didn't quite, quite understand, understand the question. The question but he was like, I'm not losing Yeah, he's like, lose. I don't think about lose. But, I mean, it, honestly speaking, he does. Stefan Shaw stepped up. It, this wasn't going to be Shaw. This is going to be Revis. So I asked for Revis, and then had he not torn his record. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this was an opportunity for Shaw. But if Shaw loses, it's not like... No, it wasn't his spot. It, it, it wasn't his spot. He took an opportunity. Uh, F.A. Jaguar, I think, was, you know, many people feel like he should win this fight. But if Shaw doesn't win this fight, it's going to be very difficult for him to get another shot. Off of that performance. I agree with that statement as well. If he would have, if he would have gone out there and fought and and lost a tough decision, he would have got, he would be a much better chance of getting another shot. 
this decision is going to leave everyone longing, uh, not longing, to see him again. And that's kind of crazy to think about with a fighter who, you know, at this point right now is undefeated. And if he ends up losing on the cards, only his first career loss. But sometimes it's like that. Just winning isn't enough in boxing. <laughs> you got to be excited too. You got to. People got to want to see you. Steph did go to the body, seven shot with the one two. He dropped the, the, the right hand down low, but very rare. Looking at some of the numbers through nine rounds, CompuBox, uh, 314 punches, or jabs, excuse me, thrown by F.A. and Jog, but a 210 for Stefan Shaw. Stefan Shaw does have the advantage in power punches thrown and landed, but in total punch count, almost 100 more punches thrown by F.A. Ajagba and 30 more landed by F.A. Ajagba through nine rounds. Yeah, Shaw's letting the fight go. Ajagba just being a little busier is taking these rounds. That's how my scorecard has it as well. So one more round. Let's go, let's go, Will Shaw be able to turn this up and try to get the scorecards in his favor? Will F.A. Ajaka build on what he's been able to do more so in the second half of this fight and walk away with a victory here tonight? Neither fighter wobbled, neither fighter down. Neither fighter throwing a lot of punches, to be honest with you, or doing much of anything. Of anything. <laughs> Uh, outside, uh, outside of what they've done, which is for a job, a, a lot of jabs up and down and a right hand, and Shaw occasionally going from effective counterpuncher in, in the beginning of the fight to um, trying to turn that around in the second half and really having a hard time being first on a consistent basis. Yeah, he, he's, he stopped countering, stopped answering, and definitely isn't the meeting. Strong jab, double jab, three, four punches there from Ajaka, right through the guard. Shaw landing down to the body with the right hand. Jocko may picking up the pace a little bit more here, Chris. Yeah, he, he's been the busier of the two the last couple rounds, just trying to make the fight, which I do appreciate. And if it comes down to it, if this is one of those pick em fights, I'm going to go with the guy who's actually making the fight happen. Oh! That's a big shot right there. Big right hand from Shaw. Yeah, and, and, and Jocko, though, took it and stood right there. Yeah, he, he, he took a little step, but, but Shaw does nothing with it. Doesn't try to build off it. I, I don't understand the mindset. He's looked very uncomfortable the second half of this fight. Second shot. There's a couple strong jabs that score for Jogba. 
Maybe not knocking the head off of Shaw, but definitely scoring punches. Yeah, making contact. Yeah, there's Shaw making contact to the body when he's starting to let his hands go here. Oh, Shaw gets through for a chakra there. to each other's corners. But I mean, through the second half of the fight, you'd have to believe that Ajagba probably pulled that one off. Yeah, he, he I mean, if not for, I mean, some people may have scored some of those early rounds for him too. I, but to me, he was at least more active. He let his hands go more. Like I said, in a, in a really close fight, the guy who pushes the action, you know, should, should get a decision. Well, turned out to be quite a lackluster. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought we'd get a little bit more, honestly. I really did. No, we, we had high hopes going into this one. We certainly, uh, that was not achieved. Here we see both men. Good exchange there. One of the very few that we had tonight. But for the most part, especially there as the fight go. wore on, beautiful. 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 it was a Jagba pushing forward, trying to make the fight happen. Shaw moving around the ring, trying to counter from the outside. And at times, we had a very effective jab and was able to counter well. But as the fight, fight wore on, he just seemed to be less and less confident in his offensive ability or his countering punch, countering ability. And a Jagba was able to come on more and more as the fight will on. We go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Eric Marlinski, John McKay, and Don Trella all score the bout 96-94. For your winner by unanimous decision, the silent ruler, Anthony! And your winner by unanimous decision. Uh, close, like you had it, Chris. F.A. Ajabba by six rounds to four, 96-94 is your winner on all three scorecards.